go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I guess I'm the worship leader today as well as the preacher. <laughs> uh, it's good to be with you this morning, Billy and for Nathan, and he and the others that are at the conference this week as well. Uh, announcements this week. Uh, I had a pastor friend years ago who used to make announcements in the bulletin and read them for yourself. volunteers to help with the sound system up there. Uh, Marva Jean, there's a message about her. I've been in there for several weeks. And a, a message about the newsletter there. Uh, looking ahead here real quick. Does anyone know of anything else? Confirmation Sunday has been set for next Sunday, June 19th. And if you're a part of the confirmation family, the state does not work you. Nathan says, please get a hold of him or the church office and let him know. And also there's a message there every week about if you'd like a message from the pastor, uh, call him or call the church office and pass that information along. Maybe you know somebody that could use a message. Pass that along as well. On Wednesday, June 15th, and Cold Festival starts every Tuesday, and you are singing on Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock, down here at the end of Mass, right? So the Mass Quartet. And the Perry Sisters. Perry Sisters. Perry Sisters as well. Well, anyway, that's always a good time. Please come and, and, uh, and be a part of that uh, this week. Tom. Yes. Um, we would like to invite everyone to join us at the courthouse steps on Tuesday evening at 6.30. Yes. 6.30 in the evening for the opening ceremony of the Cold Festival. The community band will be playing for the opening ceremony. Uh, yeah, that's also when we do the Mine is Memorial. Yes, it is. Okay. And then also, the community band is having a concert on Saturday evening at 6 30. Uh, the 18th, I believe it is, June the 18th at 6 30 at the Southern West Virginia Community College over at Rock Creek. Okay. It's free, so uh, come out and enjoy us. That would be a good thing. I'm forgetful, being. I know most of you will remember that you better count it. It would be a good thing to add on our uh, that, uh, list from the church when we get a uh, prayer list, but sometimes it's just good to add an announcement there, a reminder. So, pass that along. Right. Anyone else have an announcement this morning? Gary, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. Would you open some prayers for us?
stand and sing Love Divine, All Love Excel. Page number 384. I'm sorry. 
Oh, she Charlotte's already completed <laughs> the first hymn, and we're going to be talking a little bit about John Wesley and, and, uh, 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 and Charles as well a little bit later. Uh, let's go ahead to prayer concerns, and I'm going to go ahead and share, if you've not already heard, uh, Judy Stone passed away last night, and Bill is here, and we're excited that he, oh well, we're pleased and joyful for him that he is here, rather, but uh, remember Bill as well this morning. Sometime uh, yesterday, Bill? Yes. Uh, anyone else have uh, prayer concerns this morning? Bonnie's uncle, Dean, Dean Ash, uh, has been fighting cancer throughout his body, and he's uh, he's entering into the final stages of that right now. So uh, please keep him in prayer. He's going to be entering into the comfort care tomorrow. So please keep Dean and his daughter Beth in prayers. Dean, did Dean Ash? Dean Ash. Dean Ash. Remember Dean and his daughter. daughter. I put it on a prayer request, but um, my sister's friend, Joanna Conti, has a flesh-eating bacterial disease, and she's turned 70, so she's in critical condition. We need her prayer. Joanna Conti. I don't have a prayer request. It's more of a testimony and blessing. Uh, I was able to get rid of a car uh, yesterday that was possessed. <laughs> was, uh, somebody sent it to us to, to drain what little savings we have left, and I was able to unload that. Anyway, uh, I was talking to the guy that owns the dealership and, uh, in Somersville. Nice guy, we've known him for years. And he said, Jerry, I had to have an operation a long time. And he said, I was uh, kind of struggling, but he said, I like to work, so I went ahead and come out to work. And he said, We had a lady in town who was just an excellent person. And she was actually in the hospital. And he said, I got a call, answered my phone, and he said, she was on the other end of the line asking me how I was. And he said, I'm okay, I'm at work. She said, you know, you shouldn't be at work. You should be home resting. And he said, when I came home that evening and told my wife, he said, I walked like a baby. And he said, that, that same old woman died in the play. Now, she was in the hospital. Died. She called concern about somebody else. That's what we do as Christians. And I praise God for it. Tom, well, I don't have a prayer request, but I got we had some answer prayers this week. Um, Mallory has accepted the position at Madison Middle as the uh, West Virginia history teacher. So we'll be praying for
let me add to that some other names. Uh, Michael Emery is up at Boone Memorial, and, uh, uh, and I mentioned, I think, already those at conference, and like that, Pastor and others. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we confess this morning to you that our hearts are broken about the news of our sister Judy who's passed. And our hearts are not only broken because she has left us, but because, Lord, we think now of Brother Bill and pray for him and for God's comfort and strength and help during this time, Lord. May you not only be with him today and in the days ahead, but in the weeks and months and so forth. Head. May the grace and peace of God surround him, drawing near to your heart, Lord, and remind him that there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. Remember today, Wanda White and her health, and remember Lois. Remember Joanna Compton, the Valley mentioned. We pray again for our pastor and, and for those at conference and for pastors, some who will be going to new appointments uh, next week. And so we pray for them and for their families. We know the experience of having to move and so forth. Uh, we pray for Uncle Henry, Father, up at the Memorial. We pray for Dean Nash, his daughter. We're thankful for this testimony that Jerry and Bob shared with us and that uh, Doug shared as well about uh, Mallory's good news. Lord, today we lift up the unspoken concerns. Everyone is near and dear to your heart. I pray, Father, for your touch, and Lord, today that I might, Lord, be God's servant, standing in the gap between God and his people, sharing God's word. Now hear our prayers, Father, as we ask in Christ's name, continue the prayer that Jesus calls to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread.
We got a little change to senior bulletin. We're going to be, where are the Phillies for today? But uh, anyway, I want to make one more comment about uh, Wednesday night at the Hall Festival. It says they're starting at 7, which we normally do. We're usually the, the opening act of the day. kind of get the, the sacred vessel later on. We're going to do actually two sessions. So if you uh, if you miss the first session, come on later on, we'll be singing twice. So we'll sing the better song for last.
pages are actually on my phone about churches across the country of Methodist faith losing and splitting and things of that sort because of issues that are unbelievable. God gave us a commandment to love each other. Love each other. And it's his job to judge, not ours. We need to love every race, color, creed, sexual orientation, or whatever. Love. We need to stop this. Son of perdition, 
that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have, I have given them thy word, and thy word has hated them because the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I do not pray that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in thy truth, for thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou didst send me into the world, so have I sent them into the world. And for their sake I consecrate myself, that they may also be consecrated in truth. I do not pray for these only, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they may also be in us, so that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Thy glory, which thou hast given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, even as thou hast loved me. Let's pray. Our most righteous and loving Heavenly Father, we pause right now, Lord, to give you thanks. We're mindful that at the very same time we're worshiping you, Lord, and Methodist churches, United Methodist churches across the land, or uh, across West Virginia, are worshiping you, and and for our conferences meeting, and for they have been meeting, conducting the business. And we pray that God might anoint their business, Lord, the business of the church, and anoint the hearts of the people there, and anoint our hearts as United Methodist Father. May our hearts truly be one, as you would have them be one. Lord Jesus, as you and the Father are one, may we also be one with you, one with the Father, and one with each other. Touch us now, Father, with your Holy Spirit. Touch the hearts and minds of these who come this morning. And Father, we pray that you, I might, be open and receptive to God's Word and God's message this morning for His people. And may indeed, Lord, we hear your message of love divine, all love excelling. In the name of Christ we pray and give you thanks. Amen. Several weeks ago, I was having lunch with a longtime friend of, of nearly 50 years. And I was disturbed by something he said. Uh, this man is a Christian man. I uh, attended church as long as I can remember. Been active in this church, uh, a Baptist church. Uh, a, uh, I'm not picking on denominations this morning. Just, uh, but uh, Sunday school teacher, a deacon of church, uh, uh, a person who had been in education. And he said to me, I don't know how the conversation went there, he said, I'm a racist. I thought there was some comeback on And he said, they've made me this way. They've made me this way. And I looked at him and I said, that's wrong. It's just wrong. And he came up with some excuses. My heart was and still is broken for him. For a Christian man and women, a, a Christian man all his life, says, I'm a racist. What hope is there for the church today? Yet the psalmist says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, and I might add, for brothers and sisters, for men and women, for boys and girls, to dwell together in unity. God wants us to dwell together in unity. God wants us to know that His love enables us to come together. Part of this morning's message, a small part of it, is taken from John Wesley's uh, Catholic spirit, small c Catholic, universal church. As in this particular scripture that I read to you, it is every bit the Lord's Prayer as much as the one we quoted when we said, Our Father, who art in heaven, right there. 
He's praying for a spirit of unity within the church. He's praying for his disciples and his followers that they may be one with the Father, and one with him, one with the Father, and one with each other, each other, even as he and the Father are one. Christ is praying for their unity. He's praying his high priestly prayer for them. And this is on the night before he's crucified. He's praying this prayer of intercession. He calls the disciples together. They share a meal in the upper room. He then takes out a towel and girds himself and washes their feet. And he says to them, if the master will do this, and I'm just loosely quoting here, shouldn't you also do the same? Jesus humbles himself to wash the feet of his servants. And then he takes out bread and blesses and breaks it and passes it says, take and eat, for this is my body. And then he takes the cup and pours it. And he says, take and drink, for this is my blood, which is poured out for you. That's interesting. No doubt, he took from one common loaf and he broke it. We forget sometimes that we are all made from one common loaf. We think we're different kinds of bread sometimes. Jesus enters into this time of intercessory prayer. He knows it only a short time away, hours perhaps. His time on this earth is going to end. He knows that what lies before him is the cross. And he offers himself as an atonement. That word spelled A N. O N E. And I'm glad for God that that's what it's saying. At atonement. A T O N E M E N T. If I broke that up, Amber, what would that spell? A T O N E M E N T. A T at O N E M E N T. What's he preaching about here? Unity in the spirit that they may be one even as he is one. He's going to offer his life as an atonement for the sins of the world. That the world may be one even as he and the Father are one. That they may be at one through his atonement. I mean, I'll pick that up somewhere. <laughs> even if I didn't forget that one. Let so me give the Holy Spirit credit on that. Have you ever heard someone pray for you? I know a few of us this morning, Bill. You've heard a prayer for you. Lois and others. Isn't it special when someone takes time out to pray? You know they're praying for or they tell you, I'm going to pray for your brother and sister. It means everything to me, John. If I know someone's praying for me, if I know I'm going to walk into the pulpit this morning and pray, and Jerry's already prayed for me. It means a great deal to me. If I've been sick from facing a surgery or some particular trial, or if I've recently had to make a change in employment, it's good to know somebody's praying for me. Such experiences touch us in ways that sometimes we can't explain. We don't know how to explain it. We just know. I felt the prayers of others. And I often knew that any success I had as a pastor years ago was often because of some little old ladies in my church, some uh, elderly ladies in our church who were, no, wasn't always the same ones, but who were praying for me. They were praying that God would bless me. And whatever I did was attributed to them. You know, I just got to stand and get a little of the glory, you know, from standing for them. But someone was in the background praying. You just say the secret of John Wesley's success in praying and how so many hearts and lives were touched that usually when he was praying, someone was in either in the basement of the church, and most of the time he's out in the open field, they're out somewhere in a distance praying. They're up in the balcony or in a room out behind him, and they were praying the whole time he was in the pulpit. And hearts and lives were being touched, 
and people were coming to Christ by the masses. Have you ever heard someone pray for you when they were at your bedside? Man, doesn't that mean a lot? That means everything. I know that somebody cares enough to take time out to petition God for me. As a child, can you remember the prayers that your mother or father were praying for you? I, I thought my parents were godless when I was growing up. I shared Christ with my father uh, as a 20 year old, I guess I was. And three weeks later, he called to tell me he'd been saved and baptized. I shared his story before. He'd been saved. He's going to be a mom going to be baptized. Of course, he was. Of course, many of us were baptized. But I didn't know, I, after mom passed away, my sister gave me a baby book. She didn't buy one for everyone. I'm the oldest, I guess, that's the reason I have one. And I sort of, after my brothers and my sister came along, I was the oldest, and they didn't push the side. And there was a baby book, and all my first things, and saying, Mom taught me my first prayer. I, I don't remember too many mom and dad prayers, mom's prayers, until dad got saved. Now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to save. You remember those prayers? Mom taught us prayer, usually mom. What an experience it is. To know and have the confidence that there are some people in your background somewhere who are praying for you. And sometimes those prayers were offered us when we were children. And yet they may not come to fruition or come to the full fulfillment until many, many years later. I can remember praying for my brothers uh, for many, many years. And just a few years ago, I had the privilege of uh, baptizing my brother Randy who passed away this past February, or February of the year ago. But I prayed for him for many years. Now realize a lot of people were in the background praying for me as a child growing up. The entire church at Spencer Chapel went down where I grew up, and you would see them. And sometimes we crisscross and pray for one another. Jesus is offering this prayer here in John 17 for you and for me and for all who believe in him. Imagine the power that that prayer has to change a life. Imagine lives that have been changed because of one life that was an answer to prayer who in turn passed on and only takes a spark to get a fire going. And soon all those around can warm up to his glow. Pass it on. Jesus is praying that we might be one with him and one with each other. I remember years ago pastoring at least one church where I discovered the people, some of the people didn't like one another. And some of them even were bold enough to use the word hate. That broke my heart too. And I said, you may not like old brother so-and-so, but you got to love him. That's God's command. You know, if you say you love God and don't love your brother who you can see, you're a liar. That's God's word. Check out the First John, I believe it is. But over the years, the church has been divided. And no doubt some of this was going to come out a little bit at the conference. And uh, our district superintendent was here a while back. She had been talking about what's going to come with uh, the, the uh, general conference that occurs every four years. It's, it's sort of like kicking a can down the road and it's going to be put off for another year. Well, I said your prayer, your comment there with the right on the party. How is it that we think we can turn our backs on one another and not love each other, and then we're going to get to heaven, and all of us, everything's going to be a part of my expression, and I'm sure we're going to get along just fine. That's not possible. God wants us to learn to love one another in this lifetime, to learn to love one another. And some people hard to love. I pass in churches. Some of them are hard to love. But we love them anyway, you know. The world has been filled with splits and skits, and churches have been filled with 
schisms and splits. United Methodist Church, probably giving birth to a lot of churches that uh, were united, were called United Brethren, came in about in 1968. We were the Methodists, they were United Brethren. But if we go back, uh, we gave birth to probably one whole group of the Church of God, the Assemblies of God, I think, and to some of the Pentecostals as well. Reminds me of a story I heard when I was in seminary. I had pastor a seminary in Wilmot, Kentucky, and, and I was down there for the week, coming home on the weekends for three years. But uh, I saw, and I left the apartment for some reason, going, going out for something, and I slipped on the sidewalk and hit my head hard. It hurt all day long. Supper time came, and, and uh, several of my, my, I usually had a roommate and, and a couple of friends that were near, nearby, a, a, a few doors down from us. We had a fellowship, and we, we continued to be friends throughout seminary for this three years, and some of my fourth year. We would meet at tents. And I told him about what had happened to me and how my head was hurting. I was I'd taking some time off and then bathed it. And one of my a friend said that, uh, we're going to pray for you. Uh, I had, of the three roommates I had during the three, the, these uh, three years I was in seminary, uh, two of them were Pentecostal. Yet I never, ever heard them speak in an unknown tongue until that day when my brother laid hands on me and prayed for me. I'm not Pentecostal. I'm here to tell you as soon as he prayed for me, and I heard those words, whatever they were, the pain immediately left me. And I said, I noticed you spoke in a tongue, but I've never heard you before. And he said something to me I thought was precious. He said, Tom, the Holy Spirit is always uniting and never dividing. And I wonder if, if it's dividing, is that that's not God? It's not meant to be. And that's why I'm preaching with passion this morning. If it's divided, it's not meant to be. Now, we all don't have to fit some mold as if I've got to look and act and think alike of some particular model of a Methodist Christian or a Baptist Christian or a Presbyterian Christian or a Pentecostal Christian. We don't have to fit the same mold. We don't have, John Wesley said it this way, though we may not all think alike, may we not all love alike. We're divided over a lot of things. What in the Bible, you know, I love the NIV, I made it from the Revised Standard. I love the King James. Uh, those are some of my favorites, but uh, the American Standard, uh, New American Standard. There are a number of translations by the way. But some churches divide if you're not King James only and you're not one of us. So, and that's sad. Someone asked me one time, what translation you recommend? I said, one you can understand. <laughs> some of us grew up King James, we can understand it. We're fractured over a little bit of everything in the church. I've watched churches, and you probably have as well, uh, and, and, and you know, heard stories of them, who split over the color of the brick on the church or the carpet. I'll never forget one time, someone asked me out at the Van church, Tom, a fellow committee of us ladies in the church is going to pick the color out of the carpet. Is, is there any particular color you want? Knowing all this, I thought, you know, I'm really okay. I don't care if you pick hot paint. You know, I'm, I'm going to pick their name. You know what color that carpet is? Oh, I think. <laughs> and you know what? It looks pretty good. It's pretty close to hot things. Some of you have been out there. It's pretty close to it. And it looks very good. I have to admit, they did well. Not 
I'm not always going to agree with someone when it comes to politics. We have a rule over in Sunday school class. We don't talk politics in here. That's no place in the Sunday school room. Some churches speak it from the pulpit. But number one, are we speaking love from the pulpit? That's the most important thing. Let's preach love. The Holy Spirit will take out of all of it. I have my opinions about other things. I'm not going to hit somebody over the, the, the head, beat them over the head with something because I never on the punch. That's the Holy Spirit's job. Let the Holy Spirit speak to that person's heart or life. And the mind as well. You know, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. We all make mistakes. And if we all start picking at one another's mistakes and say, you can't come, you, you've got too many mistakes, this church is probably empty this morning. <coughs> Jesus prays for unity of the church. Jesus is praying for something very special, a unity of heart and purpose. One of these days, I get the opportunity to come back and, and, and preach again, maybe this time next year. Or, I, I'm going to preach on holiness of heart and life, which was John Wesley's theme as he prayed. You know, holiness of heart and life. What does God call us to, to do? You know, uh, if we had thought about it, I would be included uh, some of the apostles. But listen to these words this morning of what we believe as Christians. And most Christians believe this, but listen to this. And this came from Wesley's uh, sermon, Catholic Spirit. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth? And Wesley says, if you do, then give me your hand, for we are one. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, the one who was born of the Virgin Mary and suffered under Pontius Pilate? And if you do, then give me your hand, for we are one. Do you believe in this St. Jesus who was crucified, dead, and buried, and that on the third day he rose again from the dead? And if you do, then give me your hand, for we are one. Do you believe that Jesus ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty? And from thence he comes to judge the, the quick and the dead. And if you do, then give me your hand for you, your one. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? We talked about Pentecost last week. And the gift of the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about valuing the Holy Spirit in Sunday school class. This, this uh, part of this quarter. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit and that the church, as it is established by the living God in the hearts of all who confess Jesus as Lord, I modify that a little bit. And if you do, then give me your hand, for we are one. Do you believe in the fellowship of the saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? And if you do, then give me your hand, for we are one in Christ. I know one phrase in German. We're soon, brothers. Anyone know any German? We're soon, brothers. That comes from the... Uh, uh, United Brethren side, huh? Uh, we're brothers. Jesus is praying for you and for me and for all who believe in him and, and all who believe that we should be one even as he and the Father is one. We are one in faith and we are one in spirit. We are united by the grace of and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this unity challenges us today, and even as Jesus challenges the world, and continues to challenge the world, to be one, to be one in Christ. Is it possible to have difference of opinion and yet come together and worship? It better be. It better be. Christ has called us to. As a church, if the church can't exist, and, and a lot of this is touches on what you said, Mark. But if we can't, you know, what hope is there for the world, you know, if the church can't coexist with our differences of opinion? If we can't love one another in spite of our color or background or sexual orientation? The real church of Jesus Christ will understand this this morning. For we are united by God's grace, God's power, and God's blood. 
Behold how good and how pleasant it is when brethren, when sisters, or boys and girls, as I said earlier, and the people of God dwell together in unity, all one body we. We are one in the Spirit, and we are one in the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to stand and sing. I might have changed that. That's one of my favorite hymns, and I hope it fits. Uh, morning is broken. Some of you were fans of Cat Stevens. You recommend you pick that right out of the hymn and sing it. And we sing fresh from the Word, and, and, and I listen to this song several times and said fresh from the world, but it sounds just like the Word to me. Fresh from the Word. Would you stand with me and sing? One more five. Morning is broken. Touch their hearts. 
Remember those who are heartbroken and those, uh, remember our brother Bill, especially this morning, Father. Wrap your loving arms around him and may we as the church do the same. And let us, Father, remember that we that uh, we have an uh, awesome opportunity. Remember that there are words that hurt and words that heal. Father, we pray that every word that comes from our mouth would be words of healing coming from the Holy Spirit. Touch us now with your spirit. Love us in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, hold us near to your heart. We pray in Christ's name. Give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Amen.